Hello, I'm Bill Harris. Welcome to Life Questions. I'm glad you could join us for what we believe will be quite an informal discussion about the various questions that you, the viewers, have sent us. Now, these questions are about some of your important issues and in inquiries about life. And we have assembled a panel of local ministers to prayerfully review your questions with a biblical perspective in mind. And I'd like to introduce them to you at this time. To begin, we have with us Pastor Daniel Messner of Shawnee Alliance Church in Lima, followed by Pastor Mark Bailiff of the Union Chapel Missionary Church, also of Lima. Then there's Father Reverend Alexander Witt of the Holy Trinity Catholic Church, Coldwater Cluster. And rounding off our panel is Pastor Terry Hunt of the Tri-County Family Assembly of God in Bluffton, Ohio. Happy to have you all with us today. All right. Looking at one of the important questions, that, and they're all important for that matter, one of the important questions that we received was from uh, a viewer who asked this. Does it really matter if I am an actual member of my church? I hear about church membership classes, but I don't understand how being a member will make any difference for me. Who wants to start out with that? Well, I'll mm -hmm. just give a few insights. I think primarily uh, the most important question is, are we members of the body of Christ? Are we saved? Are, are we rightly related to God? And the Bible speaks clearly about that kind of membership. Um, as an example, um, when we look at the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, it says, God has combined the members of the body and given greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there shouldn't be any division in the body. One part suffers, they all suffer, one rejoices, they all. But then in verse 27 of 1 Corinthians 12, it says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Um, and so that, in my mind, is structural. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how God sees us. And then in the, the fourth chapter of Ephesians, St. Paul says, You must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we all are members of one body, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to describe how not to behave. So from a biblical perspective, I think it's most important that we are members of the body of Christ with him being the head. And then there's the legs and the feet and the eyes and the ears. And <coughs> just as I can't do without my legs, mm -hmm. you know, it talks about in 1 Corinthians 12. On a more practical note that I think answers the question maybe a little more directly, at least in our church, it doesn't matter to me whether you're a member or not. I visit you in the hospital, do the Correct. funerals, marry yes. your kids. Absolutely. That's not that's not the critical mass for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, but I do believe that membership is important far as your commitment, not to me, mm -hmm. but to this local body. Yeah. And, and then I'll be as honest as I can. If Jesus were to sit down with us today, and we would ask him about church membership, he might say, where did you get the idea of church, we church membership in the Western way we would look at it, at least as Protestants? Mm -hmm. Where did you get this idea of a membership class and then you become active members and then if you don't come mm -hmm. often, you can be an inactive member? Where'd you get this right. idea? Mm -hmm. And right. so right. he would try to bring us back to members of the I body so. of Christ. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I do believe it has great value if you're trying to justify church membership by what most people would ask the question relative to. I'd say I can't present a strong biblical basis mm -hmm. for membership as I think the question means. But uh, one brief example, I'm getting ready to retire and um, I've, I've got one couple in my church, good friends. They want to become members knowing I'm leaving which I think is a real mark of maturity mm -hmm. because it's not about me. It's go. about right. this body yes. that go. they're going right. to continue to yeah. be connected with. Yeah. Yes. And that's commitment there. Yeah. I think it is. You, yeah. you seem to be one who has studied this issue of membership. <laughs> you, you, got, you got really in depth there. That was great. That was great. Good. Really great. And, uh, you know, if I can, I, I think that the Lord uh, at the Last Supper, he talks about uh, membership a little bit more um, <coughs> as well as what St. Paul says in that he, he, he tells his disciples and he tells us through them that I am the vine, you are the branches. Right. And unless you adhere That's to right. me, you cannot have life within you. And so right. I think that the, the thing that we always have to kind of keep in mind when people are asking us these questions is what is the thing that's at stake? Yeah. That's good. The thing good. that's at stake like that. is life. Mm 
Mm -hmm. It is. And, mm -hmm. and especially for us, you were talking about kind of the Protestant idea of mem membership. For us, the, the Catholic idea of membership is not only adhering as a community, which is very important, as St. Right. Paul talks about, but also adhering sacramentally. Right. And, and that's why it's so important to receive Holy Communion, to receive the body and blood, soul mm -hmm. and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, um, so that we can be nourished. Because he says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot have life within you. And, mm -hmm. and that, is, that is the thing that is at stake, is who do you want to be? Do you want to be somebody who's uh, kind of disattached and therefore cannot have life within you? Or do you want to be somebody who is able to have the blood of Christ pumping through their veins yeah. because they belong to that one vine? Yeah, very good. I would agree with Mark pretty much everything he said about membership. Um, one of the issues that comes up with membership, and in the Christian Missionary Alliance, we have official membership, then we had adherence mm -hmm. membership, right? And that becomes a total of how many then are attending the church. But I'm sure every church has to wrestle with this, and that is the issue of discipline. When you have to deal with church discipline. What a key that is. Mm -hmm. right. Well, then, now you're talking at a different point here. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I've often thought I need to bring a different form of membership at Shawnee Lines Church from, like I would call, a covenant membership that a much higher call of standard, you're mm -hmm. going to be held to it, or in a fellowship membership. Because a lot of people just want to admit that this is my local church and this is where I want to go. Right. And mm -hmm. I want to make that public statement. Right. Right. But I'm always wrestling with this. When I've had to deal with church discipline, that becomes a different issue. And, and you know, in America today, you church, you church, church discipline, they're just going to go down the road to another church no, and find what they, absolutely. you know, get what they want. But uh, <laughs> that's always in the back of my that's mind. Right. How are you going to deal right. with the church discipline? Right. You know, that's, some people bring about this question about church membership because they want to abandon the commitment. Yes. I, mm -hmm. I don't see any need for it. But then Paul mm -hmm, said mm -hmm, in one scripture, mm -hmm. I forgot where it's found, where he says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Correct. Hebrews 10, 25. There we yeah. go. In, in the manner that some already <laughs> have. And this yes. points to the fact that, yeah, you can be a Christian in your home or wherever else. And you have to be. And you have and to be. be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Reverend. That's where you have but to be. He <laughs> says there is there's strength in numbers, basically, right. in coming yeah. together. You're going to add? Yes. Well, I was, this is, uh, may not sound as spiritual as all the other one. I agree with everything you said. On the practical side, though, when they're, yeah. like, if you're going to retire and they need another pastor or they're building something, you know, it's not, there's got to be some kind of um, parameters there of who can make these decisions and not just anybody that happens to and, be there that and day. And also with that, that, like the so precept of Christian side. charity, like the practical aspect of that as well is um, the community exists not only to glorify God, but also to be in solidarity with you. Right. And yes. if you're suffering, St. Paul says, the Correct. other members are right. suffering. That's right. That's right. And, and we want to know that you're there we, so that when you are suffering, we can be there with you. And, and, the, and the taking the, well, this may not be the best way, the ownership of it. You know, this, is, mm. this is where, this is, it's God's church, but this is my church. This is, you know, I'm, I'm investing yeah. here. I want to mm -hmm. see this continue mm -hmm. on the way it is right. and not be disconnected. Studies show that and if just, you make an investment, yeah. then you're more likely to keep the commitment. Right. So well, just a tender yeah. we are part God's, of this. God's purpose of the local church is to reach your local community. That's right. That's, and yes. that's the key. Mm -hmm. And Jesus' prayer in John chapter 17 Still, I believe he prays today. Yep. Father, make them one as we are one. Yes. There's no Amen. greater demonstration of what you call it membership or church body, whatever, yeah, right. than a body of people coming together that have unity mm -hmm. around one person, and that's Christ. Mm -hmm. There's no greater impact in the world and your community. Could it Bill, agree more? This is a silly little story, but it does apply uh -huh. that the chicken and the cow in the barnyard decide they're going to have a picnic. <laughs> and so the chicken says, I can donate eggs. Yes, and the cow right. says, I can donate <laughs> milk. So they go to the <laughs> hog and say, you know, hey, would you like to join the picnic and make a donation? And he said, well, for you guys, that's a donation. But for me, it's total commitment. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think membership could be that's summarized so that way. I've got right. a lot of people in my church, Bill, who, who tithe serve. Mm -hmm. They're there almost every Sunday, but they're not members. Really? And I've yes. never had a membership Absolutely. drive. I have no interest no. in doing that. Never have but they, they're willing to give a leg for the picnic. Mm -hmm. But like Terry said, 
when I get ready to leave and they'll vote on their next pastor, only members will be voting. So there are some lines of authority yeah. and oh, definition yeah. mm -hmm. which membership is good, but from a biblical foundation, how do you find it? That's right. I think Amen. it's largely absent in the Bible as I would understand. Yes, I agree. Absolutely. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. Good. Well, we've exhausted that. I, I want to go to another topic then. Yeah. Um, we've got a question that has come in here and, and we'll probably have to carry this in over the break. Mm -hmm. uh, this person has written saying that my dad passed away last year and my mom has really been struggling ever since. Um, can you share favorite scriptures that might help her in her period of loneliness and sadness? And I can tell you this, um, you know, I'm board chairman of an organization called the Area Office on Aging of Northwest Ohio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when a, a spouse loses their, their husband or their wife, this, this period of loneliness sets in. Yes. And, a, yes. and a study recently showed the harmful effects of loneliness and isolation on the mm -hmm. individual. I believe that. Mm -hmm. To the point where it's the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how loneliness can hit you. Yes. Uh, what what yes. can we and should we be doing to address this? What scriptures can we come about for comfort, with comfort and the like? Well, one scripture I come up uh, with is 2 Timothy 1, 7, where God says he's not giving us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. And that word sound mind means balance. Uh, or another fancy word for that would be homeostasis. He balances us in the times of crisis. Mm -hmm. And this is a crisis, you know, they've been together for many years, husband and wife, and depending on each other, it is just, I can't imagine. We, we have a little, we have a little cabochon little therapy dog. My wife is a, is a, is a, is a counselor in, in, in school and she takes this cabochon, but it's just so connected to this little thing. You know? mm -hmm. I'm thinking, what am I going to do? <laughs> this little doggy dies, you know? It's like, oh my goodness, it's so connected. But when, and, and multiply that a, a million times, your husband or your wife mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are gone. It's, it is a, a horrible kind of thing. My, my thoughts on, on on that would be, I would, because uh, they said they struggle with getting here, this on out of the house and mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they'd rather be others. isolated. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, I don't know how long ago that has been, but uh, I would seek out a Christian counselor, a biblical counselor, yeah, yeah, to yeah. help her mm -hmm. get through this grief, this grieving. And there's a big process to all of that. Everybody does mm -hmm. goes through it a little differently. But there are some things that I believe that Christian biblical counselor mm -hmm. and a, a biblical Christian counselor would help that one get through this. Because yeah. it is a, yeah. it, it, it you, you never forget and it hits mm -hmm. you at, at different times. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you know, if anybody's lost anybody close. You know, I lost my parents uh, almost six years ago now. Um, and every once in a while you get this thought, like, oh my goodness you know go through the whole mm -hmm. feeling again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know how do we deal with that well Jesus is our sustenance he yes. keeps me balanced yeah the, you know uh, let, let me pause for a break but I, I'll just say this before we go into the break it, 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 uh, there is um, counseling in the light can be very con controversial in some circles some people feel sure. that you shouldn't do it that is not biblical others who feel that you should Let's get more into that in a moment. Yes. We want to take a, a break and we'll be right back to delve into that right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back into a very interesting discussion about loneliness, isolation, and, and the need for counseling and the like. I can recall, gentlemen, when I lost my first wife 23 years ago, uh, very sudden because of a brain aneurysm how it threw me into a period of loneliness and isolation. There are times then when I would get up and just go walking through the mall, no intention mm -hmm. to buy anything, just wanting to be around people, sure. you know? Mm -hmm. 
And I finally did, Pastor Hunt. Yes. I, I went to counseling. I went to Christian mm -hmm. counseling. But you know, there's some people who do not see the value in Christian mm -hmm. counseling. They think it is ungodly. Nice. Uh, can, you, can you address that, particularly for this person that wrote in about about the loss. Uh, well, uh, the Bible uh, tells, I believe it's Psalm 1, it doesn't it? Doesn't Psalm 1 says we, we need to counsel with the godly, you know, counsel with the godly. We, it's, if it's biblical counseling, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God uh, has, has a lot, He's our sustenance, He's our counselor. The Holy Spirit is our counselor as well. He's gonna send a comforter. The Bible calls God our counselor, our Prince of Peace, the That's mighty God. That's one of his titles, yeah. Uh, I see nothing, see, I see no conflict. Now if we're getting into, you know, these other guys, Freud and all these other theories and all that, well then that may be another deal. Mm -hmm. Well, and sometimes but, they might have stuff that's good, like the Lord who created the heavens and the earth is also the Lord of science, like, and the, and the laws that these people are trying to discover. Mm -hmm. Now they might not have um, completely and accurately discovered them according mm -hmm. to the law of God, but um, you know, I, I think that a lot of people, they're, there's a goodwill there, mm -hmm. right? Even if mm -hmm. some of the things that like Freud and Jung were doing were, were kind of suspect or kind of weird in their day and in our day as well, yeah. um, there's a goodwill there. There's trying yes. to like see what are the laws that God put in place, not only that keep the planets in the sky, but also that keep the human person mm -hmm. grounded. Well, I'm gonna make, a, I'm gonna make, oh, oh. go ahead. Yeah, Jerry. God's word says, who can know the heart of man? Only God knows the heart. And That's right. it's, it's gotta be, on God's word, mm -hmm. based on God's it's word. It's got to be centered on His word. His yeah. words that He speaks, they are life and they are spirit. And, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. there are great principles here, of course, in the word of God. It's and our I, life, uh, yes. And I think we have to divide. Do we not have to divide between those who are counseling out of secular knowledge exactly right. versus those who are uh, counseling out of the word of God? But I would, I would make a distinction there. Truth is truth. Truth cannot well, contradict that, truth. And mm -hmm, so if there's mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. true in secular psychology, mm -hmm. then we know that that comes from God. Yeah. If yes, there's good, something that's good, untrue, that's true. Yeah. Then, that's true. then it doesn't that's, come from yeah. the Lord. Right, and, and that's right. why I think that it's good, you know, to, to seek, you know, a Christian counselor, but also it can be good, even if it's not the greatest good, mm -hmm. to seek out counseling of any sort, because some people, they might not have access to that, and they might feel even more isolated. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't even, you know, I'd have to drive an hour to, and you know, that sure. might be worth it, first of all. Mm -hmm. um, but there, if there's, if there's something true, then truth does not contradict truth. Well, I'm going to make a practical statement okay. related to this, this. I don't know if it's a widow or a widower. Okay. I think it's a widow. Okay. Yes. What's the function of their local church? Let's say they have one. Uh -huh. Very good. So what's right. the system that the, mm -hmm. the church has created to care for the widow and the widower? Exactly. That's, That's biblical. True. There's right? a mandate yeah. there. Right? Right? That's what the Bible so, says. So one of the things we do at Shawnee Alliance Church is we have a great ministry called Grief Share. Yes. Yes. Exactly right. Hmm. Yes. Very yeah. good. And we Grief have, share. Then we have mentors who have lost their loved ones that then partner with male, of course with male and female mm -hmm. with female. Yes. And so we have a system in place of mm -hmm. caring for the widow or the widower. We just yes. don't leave them out there after the funeral. Right. Once they get through the funeral, they gotta face the holidays, mm -hmm. they gotta face anniversaries. Mm -hmm. So who's there with them? Yes. And I think it's the body then, as Paul would say, carrying one another's burden. So my challenge to any pastor is, if I came to your church and I said, what's your system of caring for one that has lost their loved one of 50, right. 60 years, what are you doing? And mm -hmm. if you don't have that in place, then you better find a yeah. way to figure yeah. that out and start doing your job because yeah. that's what we're called to <laughs> do. Right. And one my, thing that, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. My wife is a, is a uh, counselor. Uh, is she? Uh, she has a, a license. She, she counsels at a counseling, Christian counseling in Finlay. Mm -hmm. And also uh, Finlay City Schools, she was a counselor for that. Um, and we, ha we do have uh, from time to time uh, a grief, um, uh, sessions, you know, those are going through grief. And last year we had a, a, a seminar which he led about eight weeks of that. So that, that's why I'm really into that. We're on some crisis management teams mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, really, really into this. You know. mm -hmm. And all of us go through the steps of loss. You right. cannot eliminate them. There's six steps in loss. Right. You're not going to get out of them. It's around the world. Everyone grieves. I mean, it is the emotion God created that everyone has. Mm -hmm. And where mm -hmm. people get stuck generally is in their anger and their depression. Yes. And when Good. people get stuck that's right. there, that's where we have to be 
aware mm -hmm. enough to understand how to move them out of that. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to do it alone. Right. They're going to have to have someone walking with them, and usually yeah. the best person to do yeah. that has walked it themselves. Yeah. Bill, yeah. let Amen. me interject Amen. three things real Good. quick that's very short. Um, the average person takes anywhere from 18 months to 24 months to process their grief. So they come to the first holiday, mm. like Dan said, but it, and funeral directors, that's where I actually got the phrase, I never used it, but I read one of their pamphlets, mm -hmm. and it is a grief work. Mm -hmm. it, it's something you have to work through. There are no shortcuts. No, there are none. Uh, and and no. so that's one thing. It's gonna take some time, and it helps to know I'm not going to be all right in three months. That's right. And you've got to mm -hmm. know that. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, and this is back to the practical, is that it, it, as you watch this program, uh, I, I've encouraged people when you go up to the casket, now this is not about that, and you mm -hmm. look at that widow and you say he's in a better place. Mm -hmm. No, a better mm -hmm. place would be for him to be in bed with me tonight yeah, yes. or right. he's no longer in pain. And I suggest to people, it's so practical, mm -hmm. yes. is just when you go up to the casket, when you s talk to that person, you put your arms around them and you say, I love you so much Amen. and I'm not sure anyone can understand. Exactly and the right. third thing I wanted to interject is from, very familiar verse, it's not about grieving, but it fits in so well, in, the, uh, in Philippians chapter number four, verse seven, that the peace of God, which mm -hmm. transcends <clears throat> transcends our mm -hmm. understanding. Why am I in these steps and why am I not for, it transcends it, is able to garrison and mm -hmm. guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so initially that peace is not there, mm -hmm. but one of the parts of the grief work is peace starts to find its way back. Mm -hmm. but, but there are no shortcuts, uh, but we can help the grieving by not saying things mm -hmm. we shouldn't, yeah. And by being yeah. there and have yeah. the, and by the way, we have sent many, many people over to your church okay. and your ministry has been a tremendous Amen. blessing to them in times of loss. That's good. Yeah. That's right. That's very yeah. good. Very good. Yeah. One good. thing that I was thinking about with, um, with this and uh, my mom died a few years ago, um, three years ago, oh, and um, something that really helped me to get through it is we're talking about the isolation that we can feel. And sometimes that isolation can also come in our relationship with God. We might think to ourselves and, you know, people might say unfortunate things that trigger that within us. Sure. Like, why has God done this to me? Right. You know, I, I, mar I uh, buried right. a 26-day mm -hmm. child a year ago. Yes. The other day I buried a, wom mm -hmm. a woman's child. His name was Daniel. So, um, mm -hmm. But he was <coughs> premature and... Um, just a really bad pregnancy and yes. and the thing that that I think is so important that really helped me to kind of get through um, my personal loss and the thing that I try to communicate at some point of that grieving work to the people in my to answer kind of your question pastor what do what, what does the community do is really bringing them back to the beginning of the Bible yeah and the creation and and Genesis and Adam and Eve in the garden in the beginning Death was not an original part of God's plan. Right. Death exactly. entered yes. into the garden mm -hmm. through Adam and Eve's sin. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate, but now it's mm -hmm. with us until mm -hmm. the Lord comes and saves mm -hmm. us from it in the final, in the yes. final end. Um, but that's something that's really important to know and to, and to reflect on when we can, right? This isn't something that yes. we want to reflect on day one after the trauma happens, but, but yes. to reflect on the fact that God is not against me in this. That's right. That yeah. God created this exactly. person for something yes. greater than, than this right. death. And that God mm -hmm. is grieving with me. Yes. Right. God yes. also yes. lost a son yeah. or a yeah. daughter today. Yeah. You know, one of, the things that, uh, one of the things that I learned in the grieving process when I went to the Christian psychologist was that he said to me, when you want to cry when you feel the need to cry he said do so yes mm -hmm. it's not a weakness he said in no, fact there right. are toxins yeah. in those tears yes. that need to come out mm. and you don't you don't you don't, you really don't need to hold that and you need to let that go mm -hmm. and uh, another lady who was a friend of my late wife told me that she said well when my husband passed away she said I went around the first six months acting as though nothing had even changed mm -hmm. and she said mm -hmm. when it came down on me it came down really yes, hard right. Yes. She said, you must go through the grieving process. Yes. And um, that was tremendously helpful mm -hmm. to me. There's a new normal after the, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. It'll never be normal again as it was. Right. But it will be a new normal 
Mm -hmm. And it's not you that is, sometimes you may feel like, what's wrong with me that I yeah. am not a stronger Christian to yeah. deal with this? Well, there's nothing wrong with you. Anybody would be feeling this sure. way going through sure. a crisis. It's the, it's the crisis that's abnormal. Yeah. yeah, the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. There and that go. was there over the loss of Lazarus. Right. And Jesus was yes. the resurrection of life. Yes. But he still wept. Yes, he did. Uh, he still wept with Lazarus. There. Uh, yeah, there, there, there was, was a grief there. Bill, one of the things I hear from widows, and as a married person, it didn't cross my mind. Uh, they said, I went from being a couple to being a single. Mm -hmm. And all their friends who are still married, That's good they thing. say, you're mm -hmm. welcome to come. We want you to come yeah. with us when we go out yeah. to eat. And, and I recognize that as the body of Christ, where, you know, I'm, I'm going out to eat on a Sunday morning with my wife, and here's mm -hmm. a widow who, for That's whatever right. reason, I said, why don't you come and eat with us today? We want, want you to be with yeah, us. Yeah. And you would think you gave that person $500 yeah. because they're significant <laughs> yes. and That's right. even though they're single. Mm -hmm. and, and that Amen. is a very difficult time. And is. let's be honest, in our culture, we try to deny the emotions attached to death all the time. We do. Yes. And we do not face it anymore. It is not something that we walk together as a community anymore. Mm. I mean, in California, you have drive-by viewings. You know, it's just like Goodness picking sakes. up a hamburger at McDonald's. We yes. drive by. We just don't face death. Mm -hmm. And as believers, you know, we continue to celebrate that this person has become all that God created them to be. Yes. But we cannot forget the sadness that lies within people's hearts. Yes. It yeah. is gut-wrenching and they yeah. will experience it and we have to give them community and community that builds them up. There's no right. one exactly. right way to sure. grieve. That's right. That's right. And That's right. Uh, two sisters who lost their husbands may very well grieve differently mm -hmm. and the timing be different, but Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's unless, necessary. Unless yeah. a grain of wheat falls to yeah. the ground and dies, they cannot become anything. That's right. right? And, right. and we, we go through that physically in the death and the resurrection that the Lord promises us. That's right. But we also go through that emotionally and psychologically and spiritually through our own being willing to enter into that falling to the ground and dying. Yeah, that's good. It is a Amen. curse. Remember, yeah. the last curse removed is death. Is, is death. death. That's the last It enemy. is our greatest enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. We're all wrapped up. Mm -hmm. uh, all out of time. Thank you very much. And I certainly hope thank that you your conversation has been a big help uh, to the individual who wrote that yes. question. And we thank you very much. And uh, we'll be back again uh, next week at the same time. We want to thank you for being with us. And we also want to encourage you to send in your questions so that we can answer them and helpful, hopefully give you a biblical perspective that is right on with where you are in life. So until next week, I'm Bill Harris. Thank you for being with us. Bye-bye. Thank you. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.